Hey, I bet you thought we were gonna see a chainsaw, didn't you? We will. I got a riddle for you though. What does a chainsaw and a bicycle have in common? Other than of course they both have some kind of chain on them. Well, on some chainsaws, just like this bicycle, you could change the sprocket size on your drive sprocket. So that'd just be like gearing up with this guy going to a bigger sprocket in the front. If you have the right setup on your chainsaw, you can do the same thing. Let's talk about that. Okay, so how does gearing apply to a chainsaw? This is a factory 590 clutch. This is an aftermarket clutch that I sourced from Little Red Barn. Great piece. This is very similar to the factory clutch on the 620 saw but it's a little bit different. Uh, it actually uses the uh, steel style rim. So, and what is the rim sprocket to begin with? Well, if you look at the side, you see the wear pattern. So the chain actually has to move back and forth on this clutch. On this, the, the actual chain stays tight within the rim and the rim actually floats back and forth. So instead of replacing the whole clutch, you know, clutch wear, for the most part, you can replace the rim a couple times before the actual clutch bell needs to be replaced. So there's that. So this also allows you to do is easily change out these for different tooth counts. So we're starting with a seven. This is also a seven. You see there, three, eight, seven. But let's look up here. Hey, what do we have? got some eights and even a 10. Let's lay these guys side by side. So as you can see there's a bit of difference. Now the 10, I don't really recommend these. Um, I always knew they kind of had a problem with chunking chains. I didn't know why. After conversing with Dino Joe the other day, we got on the subject of uh, rim sprockets. And I said, hey, you know, I've got a firewood guy that uh, really wants to run his bar faster. What do you think about a 10-pin sprocket? He goes, well, it'll run faster, but you may be chunking chains. So let's look at why that's the case. So we'll throw a 7-pin sprocket in here. As you can see, a nice taper down. So this is how it would sit on the saw. So you just have a nice taper down back to the uh, sprocket. And so you still have a lot of retention here with the um, chain. Let's go to an 8. With the 8 pin, you can start to see a little bit of the chain not wanting to stay in the groove here. So until you get some chain wear and you get some distance from the bar, this combination might even want to chunk the chain a little bit. Just because on the Echoes it's a little bit narrower back here. Now, if we were to put a 10 pin on there, we would have all sorts of problems so we're not even going to attempt that oh one more thing to note those of you that like these bars on the echoes or end up buying one for the echo remember it typically is going to take two um two drive lengths longer chain compared to the factory bar so factory timberwolf takes 70 drive lengths the Sumira bars, 72. Everything else is the same, but the bar, even though it's called a 20 inch, has just a couple more links to it. So, first time I bought one, didn't realize that. It uh, definitely surprised me. Okay, let's talk about what we're about to see. This is one of my Stage 3R portings. Uh, basic muffler mod, not very loud. This has the highest RPM potential of any of the saws that I set up. Factory chain, which is a full chisel factory bar. It's got the sprocket upgrade I showed you earlier. This is wearing the seven pin. So we're gonna do some test cuts and then chain swap out to the eight pin and test again. No other changes. So let's see what cuts faster. And the saw was warmed up, so again, I'm not beating on a cold saw, so that's also why it fires up so easily.
Not bad. Okay, back on the bench. The swap sprockets. I'll show you how easy it is. Just loosen up our two nuts here. This is a little more stubborn than I thought. Okay. So we're going to do away with the, actually I'm going to blow some dust out of here because if I put this back on there, it's liable to plug up my bar. Uh, one thing to think about, it's very important on oiling, make sure this area is clean and likewise on the bar when you put the bar back together, when you put the bar back on the saw rather. Um, this is just inviting garbage to get into this uh, oiling groove where it lines up with the bar. So I'm going to clean this up and be back. Okay. We're all cleaned up now. Very easy. Once you have the rim sprocket system on the saw, just pop off your C clip and be careful with this. It will go flying across the room and you will not find it. I probably got about 20 clips hidden in the corner of the shop somewhere. So basically, retainer comes off, rim sprocket comes off. We'll just replace it with a steel eight sprocket, eight pin sprocket. That's it. Everything goes back together, reverse the way it went on. My trick to getting these on, get it started. Get a pair of pliers. Use it to uh, squeeze it back in place. That's it. All right, I won't bore you putting the bar back on the saw. You know how to do that. So we'll just put it back together and do some more cuts. Okay, we're back this time with the eight pin sprocket. And I had to move the blocker a little bit. Same block we just cut. And uh, we'll do some cuts with the eight pin. See if the theoretical faster chain speeds can actually uh, translate to an actual faster cut. And uh, really can't do this if your saw doesn't have the power to do it. So. If it bogs down the saw, may cut slower. We'll see. We just witnessed we put the eight pin sprocket on the back sped the chain up cut a little faster who wants this kind of thing well who doesn't want to cut faster get more work done in less time finish the day a little sooner cut a little more wood well when can we not do that well you know, if we probably had two of these side by side like some other cut test probably a little much for the saw even with the 40 I may want to go back to the seven pin but this is a great setup for the guys cutting limbs off the trunk. Uh, smaller wood, firewood processing. More done, less time. The only time you can't do it, like I said, is if you don't have enough horsepower headroom. It's kind of a term I just made up, but you have to have enough headroom, meaning extra horsepower available to go to a bigger sprocket on the rear. So if you do a bigger sprocket and the saw just can't handle it, you may drop the RPM so much you're making less horsepower and you actually cut slower. Not the case on this setup, but even with the porting, I probably wouldn't go more than an 8-pin sprocket on this setup. One for chain retention, two. That 10-pin I showed you earlier, it's probably just a little bit much. So, um, yeah, that was a good setup. Firewood guys, limbs, this would be uh, more work done in less time. Isn't that what we all want? Thank y'all for watching.